into the late 1800s. The arts and crafts movement is at the height of its fame and a group of men and women are busy rewriting the rule books of design and architecture. They wanted to make everyday objects beautiful and they left an impact on British design we still feel today. But make no mistake, this was about so much more than pretty wallpaper and embroidered cushions. These artists, architects and political thinkers were starting a revolution. Inspired by art critic John Ruskin and socialist designer William Morris, they hated the drudgery and ugliness of the industrial age. They wanted to turn the clock back to an age where a craft worker's skills were valued. These were principles, not just for design, but for life. Bring joy to work, share knowledge, and make beauty accessible to all. From the 1880s to the 1920s, they spread their radical message across Britain. Art could help to end social inequality. Which is a great idea, if you can make it work. To find out what we can learn from the arts and crafts movement, six 21st century craftspeople are heading back to the world of the 19th. The crafters are going back to basics. They won't find computer-aided design or power tools here. In real life, we wouldn't be worried about it. Just put a machine, Whew, we'll go. Now they're spending a month together in a Victorian artist's commune. We're going to be up early, we're going to be in late. Mm -hmm. Yeah, OK. They'll be living the arts and crafts dream. Oh, Simplicity, fellowship, Thank you. and taking joy in work as they remake this stunning house room by room, without tears or tantrums. You start off all being very nicey-nicey. As the pressure builds up, it's really hard to hide the real you. Can they recreate the beautiful objects and high ideals of the arts and crafts movement by hand? Oh! And will recapturing the spirit of the past bring fresh creativity to the crafts of the present? It's the first week in the Victorian House of Arts and Crafts. And six modern-day crafters are on the way to their home for the next month. A creative commune in the Welsh Wye Valley, where two design experts are joining them for the first time. Patch Rogers, an arts and crafts expert and dealer, will be assessing the quality of their work. And Keith Brimer Jones, an internationally known potter, will be on hand for help and advice. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the late 1890s. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Well, you're looking the parts. So this is how it's going to work. We are going to breathe life into this beautiful old house. It will be done room by room. Each room will feature three key arts and crafts objects created by you. Now, the objects that you're going to be making had meaning and purpose way beyond just being pretty things. They represented deeply held beliefs for a useful and good life. They were political objects. Over the next month, you are going to make 12 classic arts and crafts pieces, some of them taken from this original Morris & Co catalogue. I think we should go and see the first room, this way. This week, our crafters will be decorating the house's parlour. In Victorian times, it was a room for entertaining stuffily. It was often the most ornate room in the house, somewhere you could show off your wealth and position. Uncluttered it wasn't. Layered velvet, fringes and tassels and dark woodwork only added to the gloom. The arts and crafts movement threw out this fussy, heavy Victorian style and replaced it with light, space and calm and handcrafted, less formal furniture. Three objects do not make a room, so in keeping with the ethos of the arts and crafts movement, you'll be sharing knowledge 
and responsibility. And between you, you will finish the entire parlour because it's not enough to just have those three objects. So it's not feet up for three of you and hard work for the other three. It's about working as a group. So to our first object, and that is for you, Abdullah. Okay. <laughs> Keith, could you reveal what it is, please? It is this magnificent Sussex chair from the man himself, William Morris. Whoa. <laughs> okay, I love Sussex chair. The Sussex chair was a hugely popular design sold by Morris & Co. The leading light in the arts and crafts movement, Morris railed against mass production, which he thought made soulless objects for soulless people. Instead, he championed the handmade creation, fashioned with love and care and cherished by its owners. It was meant to last a lifetime. But handcrafted objects don't come cheap. In the early 1900s, this chair cost nine and ninepence, nearly half the weekly wage of the average Victorian clerk. Today, it would cost you around 1,600 pounds. The next object will be made by you, Bryony. Patch, what have you got for her? So what we've got is we've got a C.R. Ashby silver hand-raised bowl. And believe it or not, it was meant to represent simple tableware in everyday life. Charles Robert Ashby was another key figure in the arts and crafts movement, best known for his silver, jewellery and furniture. His bowls are highly collectible and cost thousands of pounds to buy. What we want you to do is recreate this bowl. Wow. <laughs> Just tell me what you think. I mean, I love the, the, the big smile on your face. Yeah. There's always something nerve-wracking about a piece that you've never made and you really want to get it in your hands to have a look and see how it's made. It will definitely push me, which is exciting and terrifying as well. And the third object is for Elsa. Patch. OK, let's have a look. There it is, an original piece of William Morris wallpaper. As well as his furniture, Morris is famous for his sumptuously patterned wallpaper, often based on British flowers. But his designs took a while to catch on. 25 years, in fact. It was the royal seal of approval that finally put him on the map. In 1887, Queen Victoria commissioned him to make wallpaper specially for Balmoral. Now, Ilsa, we're not asking you to recreate this design. What we're asking you to do is, using arts and crafts techniques, create your own interpretation of the William Morris print. OK, sounds good. Happy? I'm yeah, I'm excited that I can bring my own interpretation, definitely. Well, it's a lot of work, but you've got one entire week to get it all done. And all of you will be involved, because in the ethos of the movement, it's about the group. William Morris said himself, fellowship is heaven and lack of fellowship is hell. And what we want to create here is a piece of heaven. And so for the next month, these six crafters will be living out the high utopian ideals of the arts and crafts movement. <laughs> we hope. This my room. Ilsa Parry is a product designer from Liverpool. Very basic. I'm hoping I'm not going to have to use this bedpan thing. I think I wanted to take part in this experience mainly to have a collaborative project because it's been a long time since I've done that. Sometimes I'm quite solitary in how I work and my best ideas come when I bounce off other creative people. I want to experience joy in creativity, which is something I feel I've lost. There's no microwave here. I can't see microwave here. Abdullah Nafisi is an Iranian-born furniture maker from West Sussex. Hello, Victorian times. <laughs> wow. Rod Hughes is a bladesmith from Surrey. Ooh, it's a bit uh, smaller than I'm used to, but uh, I get used to anything. This is a meeting of all the talents by design. Oh, it's nice and warm. Bryony Knox is a silversmith from Edinburgh. Good old pickled onions, some brown sugar. Her work is elegant, glamorous and playful. Oh my goodness. And Neve Wimpress is an embroiderer from Stroud in Gloucestershire. Beautiful. She gets the biggest room, but it's where she'll work, on this antique Victorian sewing machine. 
My grandma has a sewing machine like this. <laughs> no excuse for lack of inspiration. The House's library is helpfully stocked with arts and crafts books and manuals. But the arts and crafts people would very much catalogue its progress. <laughs> Predominantly, it was about teaching. Arts of life, that's important. Block printing, thank you. The Victorians had lost sight of the sort of handcrafted, artist-designed elements of their world. Um, it was Morris's idea to bring that back. Hints on pattern so, designing. Oh. I'll just take off these. <laughs> Dancing book. Stephen Winstanley is a potter and the youngest and least experienced of the crafters. Not really. Yeah. Oh, I'm not really sure if I'm going to spend much time in here, to be honest. And now the challenge becomes real. Okay. Our crafters take a closer look at the original work they'll be matching themselves against. And it's impressive. Oh, interesting. It's not very exactly copied. But that's good. Oh, I love the mind of the person who has designed this. I love it. I love how there's a sense of depth to it. Ilsa has to make a free interpretation of this William Morris wallpaper design using traditional block printing techniques. So how many colours? One, two, three, four. Six, seven, ah, let's count again. Bryony puzzles out the secrets of her C.R. Ashby bowl. Elegant in its simplicity. I wanted to see how the soldering of the handle is attached. It's quite interesting that it's on both sides. And then that shape and the fact that it's totally, perfectly equal. Sometimes symmetry is the hardest thing to recreate. It's the first working day in the Victorian House of Arts and Crafts. And what a house. It will be home to our six crafters for the next four weeks. This beautiful building was commissioned in the Arts and Crafts style in 1910. The Arts and Crafts leaders deeply valued good design. But this wasn't just about aesthetic appeal, it was political. The ultimate aim was to enable the working classes to lead better lives. The High Priest was John Ruskin, a philosopher and social reformer, and an artist himself. From him, William Morris took the idea that working with your hands could bring pride, not just a way to earn a living. He called this the dignity of labor. Morris's extensive writings also inspired nostalgia for rural traditions and the joy of the countryside. Morris is important in the sense that he was the father of the arts and crafts movement. Um, I mean, Morris was um, a rebellious type. He was an idealist, and at the foremost, he was a great designer. His designs have been used for the last 130 years. I mean, they're still being used on the high street today. Not only will the crafters have to create beautiful objects, Good morning. but do it in a way Ruskin and Morris would have approved of. They've got a month to live together in line with the founders' ideals as an 1800s creative commune. Living the arts and crafts dream starts on day one at breakfast. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Take a seat and I will be serving breakfast very shortly. This morning the crafters will be fed by their cook, Mrs Staker. Okay. But from now on, in keeping with Morris's collective philosophy, everyone will have to muck in. I'm all right, thank you. This is Kedgeri. Whoa. Which is yeah. rice and mm. eggs and, and fish. Yeah. Yeah. All kinds of fish. Had it. Smoke had it. It's a breakfast dish. Right. I might be sick. Oh. Oh. Bacon, Fuck. baked mushrooms. Ooh, That's yeah. more wow. like it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, so for the parlour, I think we've all got a vague outline of what everybody is hoping to achieve now, right? We've Each week, one crafter things. will be in charge. Uh, so this week, it's Neve and it's up to her to make sure the team work collaboratively. She knows the parlour can't be a mishmash of competing styles, and Ilsa's wallpaper will set the tone. At least, she thinks it will. I would love for the room to be about our story in some way, whether that could come through on the wallpaper, in the imagery. What time scale are we going to put on that? Because my concern is that some of the objects that we have to make are very, very complex. Of course. In a very, very short period of time. 
it's absolutely right to have a theme, but to a certain extent, some people are going to have to just get started and going. I feel quite I, under pressure. My brain doesn't work like that. You've got to give me a bit of space. I will give, try to give you as much space as you need. But why do, why why do, do you need? need to know? Because my brain does work like that, then, because I know um, we're not going to have enough time. Like, he's a builder. Yes, I, he's I builder. get that. He's a builder. We're all designers okay, okay. that make it things. It doesn't matter. Guys, we, we come all, on. We, we all do things <laughs> different. Yeah. Guys, we all do different things differently. Mine is real concern about time skills. And what I'm just flagging up for, for me... Um, is, but it's going to come back to can, me. Can I just shut up? If I, a sec, can you shut up a second? Can, that's a bit rude. Can but okay. I'm sorry, can you just listen to me <laughs> for a second? Can do it in second? a nicer way? Right. So on time, on time management, I'll get on with the drawing. Elsa, Elsa, when you're ready, give me a shout and I'll put some in. And if you're not available, don't worry about it. I'll figure oh. it out. I don't need... Do you know what I mean? I okay. really appreciate it, okay. but I can't... I'm not going to throw something out there that's shit yeah. because I've been rushed. Fine. Yeah. Okay, we've got that's it. That's craft. Okay. You know, you're going to be... Creative differences haven't taken long to emerge, have they? The crafters will work in the same way the arts and crafts pioneers did. They've all been given their own workrooms and authentic tools. So no arguments there then. I think it's going to be great. I can hammer away to my heart's content and not piss anyone off. <laughs> ah, oh, this is beautiful. It's really nice done, nicely done. In the time of arts and crafts, the tools often dated back to earlier centuries and were highly prized. I've been inspired by looking at the studio. Oh yes! Yes, baby! I am excited to work with all those tools. However, there's a lot of power tools missing in there, which I wish I have adopted my skills and my hands are very good with them. It is inches. Oh God. <laughs> I work in millimeter. Abby first needs the raw material for his Morris chair. A whole tree is more than he bargained for. Uh, this is my first time green woodworking. I'm a cabinet maker who has been drawn back 150 years. My worry is that the tree doesn't split in two halves all the way to the end because I'm not experienced. I am imagining the tree will get that line and go all the way from the crust, from the middle. Otherwise, it might just split like that. And I'm losing a lot, a lot of good, good wood. Right. Okay. right. So this Sussex chair, I mean, what a complex object. In fact, the more I look at it, the more complex it becomes. Abdullah's got to recreate all these angles and these facets and he's got to get all this, the bending right, the planes right. I mean, some of the, some of the angles are planed on three sides. Yeah, it's very fine work. I think that the whole point of this chair is it's a very balanced piece of furniture. You know, the fact that these arms continue down through to the stretcher below, the spindles are very ordered. These aren't just spindles that have just been taken off the shelf. These have been designed by someone who knows what they're doing. And I think that's what I'm looking forward to seeing. beginning work on her version of the exquisite C.R. Ashby Bowl. Like Abby, she starts with the raw material, a single piece of silver, worth about £350. I love being a metal worker. I've been lucky enough to find what I'm meant to do in life. I discovered metal work when I was at university. It was actually wood that I thought was going to be the thing that really got me going, but I was always chopping too much off wood. <laughs> it never really worked. And I just started hammering metal and sawing metal, and I very quickly realised that it really suited my temperament. Patch and Keith know they've thrown down the gauntlet for Bryony. 
It's exquisite, really. It's a tall order. But it's a beautiful bowl. I mean, the hammering, it really gives it a sense of the arts and crafts and the handmade value. It really sums up what English arts and crafts is all about. That loop handle, it's so simple, it's so beautifully made. It's a perfect object to represent the movements. Ilsa's in the parlour, the room the crafters will refurbish this week, sketching out some initial ideas for her wallpaper pattern. William Morris designed his first wallpaper in 1862 and called it trellis, inspired by a rose trellis at his home in Kent. When you look at Morris's wallpapers, there's nothing shrinking about his, his designs. They're bold, they're strong. Also, I think that he had a great eye for colour and for the palette of the day. In order to buy William Morris's wallpaper back in the day, you would have to have been quite an avant-garde person. You weren't an everyday Victorian in that sense. So you were looking for something different, and Morris was giving you that. There's an existing block that I have to work with from this print. The dark green sections are what I have to work with and around. Trying to do a job that would take 10 minutes on a computer. And it's taken me about four hours up to now. It's the end of the first day. Starting tomorrow, the crafters will need to work in collaboration with each other if the parlour project's going to be ready on time. Seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one. Potter Stevens up early. Four, forty-five. He's decided to create some tiles for the fireplace surround in the parlour. He's using a traditional method for his measurements, taking the dimensions of the house as his starting point. Currently making our little model of the front of the house for the fireplace. I managed to draw out the proportions of it without a calculator or measuring tape. Pretty much just used my feet and then counted how many steps it was. And then I worked out the ratio of that for the fireplace. There was a lot of math yesterday, <laughs> so. How'd you get on? Very late night, and then it's not fully finished. Okay. Ilsa's getting close to deciding on a design for her wallpaper. Because she's using the technique of block printing, each new element of her design needs its own wood carved block. And that means at least three individual blocks. And she's running out of time. So even though I'm nowhere near a finished design, mm -hmm. and most of the day's gone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the block has to be cut tomorrow morning. Rod has offered his own woodworking skills, but these two crafters have very different approaches. This could be tricky. So have you got a definitive design yet? No. You okay. Don't ask me again. Okay. Ilsa is taking her time over coming up with a concept. I appreciate she's got to come up with an idea. Um, different styles. I'd have come up with a concept in 30 seconds, a couple of minutes or something like that. She's taking half a day. It's okay, let me explain. I want the feel of the experience here to be embedded in the motifs and the imagery to spark conversations, whether the colours should come from emotions. This is my project, but I feel that living in an arts and crafts commune, it's about collaboration and learning from each other. But, but yeah, okay, um, but at the end of the day, we're trying to make something beautiful. We could pick a colour that's very right on, it could look dull. Yeah, yeah, yeah have a lot of respect for his knowledge so I was keen to work with him then I realized that he was quite the instant decision maker and he's headstrong and he wants to do things in his own way there is a fairly old color 1700s um, dead salmon um, sounds like it's full of life um, <laughs> I'm gonna do my best to be very very calm and not to rise to it but she does like my wick a little bit it is actually quite a sort of dully pinky color they were, they were quite You're really selling it to me <laughs> <laughs> Group leader Neve is helping Abby with his Sussex chair by rush weaving its seat. 
Rush weaving is an ancient craft practiced in Britain since the late 1500s. It was a skill much admired by the arts and crafts pioneers for its timelessness and simplicity. So far, it's been mostly unsuccessful. <laughs> uh, this is an entirely new process to me. Um, and I'm working off diagrams from an old book and it's, it's just really difficult to try and work out what goes where. The principle of reed weaving, I think, is to kind of make squares and then you build up the corners and then eventually they will all join in the middle, as far as I can understand it, with having not a clue how to do it. <laughs> Stephen is planning tonight's dinner with the indispensable Mrs. Beaton's Book of Household Management to hand. Published in 1861, it was the first book of its kind to feature simple step-by-step -step recipes. It's not for the faint-hearted. <laughs> so super glued on. <laughs> I think that before you had a lot of easily accessible meat in supermarkets, this probably would have been fairly common because rabbits are fairly common and meat was probably expensive. So I'd imagine people would be used to setting traps and want to do this themselves. Having split the tree trunks, Abby's moved on to his next task. Turning the legs of the Sussex chair using a pole lathe. By the late 1890s, steam-powered lathes were widely used. But despite it being labour-intensive, the pole lathe was preferred by individual craftsmen. It allowed them to control the process more precisely. This is the back leg of the chair. This, this is the Sussex chair, and these are the back legs I'm making right now. So the way that, the way that to, to make this is to first create the whole back of the chair, and then the two legs, uh, it's gonna be quite a process to do. But I am, I am getting more confident that I can, I can get it on time. This is one, one leg that I have already finished. Um, the diameter, it's going to be one inches in the bottom, one and a quarter in the middle, one and a half inch onto the top. So it's going to go back onto the lathe and I'm going to get the diameter right and then it will be sent for steam bending. It's fascinating seeing this tree trunk go from, from this big lump of wood to this lovely fine spindle. And it's just been done by very, very simple wood lathe and a, a hell of a lot of patience. And I think that's the thing that comes over in all the products, the amount of patience that the crafter needed to achieve these beautiful objects at the end of the day. Um, and, and, and you have to admire that and you have to respect that. And at the moment, by God, I'm respecting Abdullah. That night, it's pigeon, partridge, and thanks to Stephen, with a little help from Mrs. Beaton, rabbit pie. Again, you don't get much on a pigeon, do you? But someone's been too busy for dinner. Good evening, guys. Mm. Hello. 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 I broke my leg inside. Oh, my oh God. you brought a <laughs> stick. Wow. I need to put it by the fire. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. Oh, well done. It can dry over the night. That's oh, amazing. Nice. That's the first, uh, wow. first and the second one. Wow. Yeah, so oh. we've got, we've got okay, well, look, why don't you just grab, we, we place it up a meal oh for gosh. you. Oh, Go on, so. just grab it. It won't take you any time. Yummy. I would have loved to. I'm losing light. Mm. Do you know what? Yeah, I'm losing the light. Mm. Mm. So, love you all. Good luck. All right, <laughs> wish you luck, wish you luck. With 
just a few days to go until the parlour needs to be ready, Ilsa is at a local design studio. Just pull me if I do anything wrong, OK? She's preparing the background colour for the first block of her wallpaper design. In the late 19th century, the British wallpaper market was booming. Mass-produced and cheaply made papers were available to all but the very poorest households. So far, so good. But unfortunately, these cheap wallpapers were real Victorian monstrosities. Designers like Morris reacted against them, instead producing wallpapers with stylized designs that turned flowers and natural forms into a series of formal symmetrical shapes. That's it, just gently move it away. There's no margin for error. You want, it's the pins you want, the pins are on this side. OK, and I'm going to press. Right. Now... So that one print took me, what, ten minutes? <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've got hundreds to do. <laughs> this is the first block of three Ilsa needs for her design. She'll have to carve extra blocks to add more colour and complexity. But Ilsa's worried that her design choices aren't in keeping with the arts and crafts style and wants to discuss them with Keith. Neve and I were talking about different colours and her and Rod particularly were very keen on having this idea of a strong burst of colour, like a, a vibrant pink or something, which initially I thought, I'm not sure if that's going to be in keeping. Right. This, it's really nice to see. This, however, that's very, very bold. I admire your boldness, but I'm worried for you that, you know, if that doesn't work, Patch might have something to say about it. <laughs> in my honest opinion, I think that what I'm doing is very much in the spirit of arts and crafts. Everything is open to interpretation. I don't think I need to have a fight with Patch about it. Back at the house, Bryony's working on the next stage of her C.R. Ashby-inspired piece. She's using the traditional way of making a bowl from a flat piece of silver, which is called raising. The work she's aiming to emulate was a signature piece for C.R. Ashby. Charles Robert Ashby is predominantly a designer, but also an architect. He set up a company called the Guild of Handicraft. They were first based in London. They then took themselves down to Chipping Camden in the Cotswolds and set up a commune, teaching, craft, design, and everything that went along with that. He was an idealist, and you know, they would get up in the morning, they would do their exercises, and you know, they would eat together, and they would design and, and work together. And they produced some very elegant and very beautiful things. It wasn't necessarily successful in the end, but the legacy of C.R. Ashby and the School of Handicraft is that it gave birth to art colleges. It really established teaching, craft and design within the school framework. Rod is working on one of the blocks that will be used to print Ilsa's wallpaper. She and Rod are still failing to see eye to eye. The collaboration is not going well. yesterday when I was drawing on paper and the paper was swiftly taken from my hands because it was ready for carving in Rod's opinion. I feel that like I'm not being trusted to do work that I know I can do. So I've been there today, I've seen the process, I know how it needs to be done. The crafters might be sharing a common goal, but they don't seem to be sharing a common vision. Happily, team leader Neve has a cunning ruse in mind. Hey. I was wondering if maybe you would like to make an object of your own. Ooh, that's a thought. Um, nothing huge, nothing, you know, yeah. massive, but you're putting all your creative energy into, into everyone else's pieces. Mm, yeah. Um, and maybe you could be for channeling mm. it in your own direction. More than happy to, yeah. yeah? I mean, if I can... Just finish flattening this off so someone else can okay. carry on. Okay. How long? Uh, how long do you think that's going to take? Half an hour. Okay. Yeah. Half an hour. Yeah. 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 
Having turned the individual pieces for the Sussex chair, Abby now needs to give the spindles on the back their distinctive shape. And to do that, he needs to use the ancient technique of steam bending. A technique used in everything from the building of ships' hulls to the making of violins. I just have to quickly put all of the wood inside before the steam goes out. It's a very quick process. Otherwise, I'll lose my steam. And uh, making the steam with the fire is a much longer process than making it with gas boiler. So now I have to wait for a couple of hours to get this out again. I am loosening the lignin inside the wood, which is like a glue inside the wood, which makes it quite more flexible. But I have very, very short amount of time until I take it out and put it onto the template that I have built. That will be like giving me about less than a minute. Other than that, uh, the wood will get stiff. Right. Dangerous part is that they might split. I've got one more spare ready for it, which I have to finish it. I'm really understanding this art and craft. I'm really, really understanding it. Sussex chair to me is art and craft. It's seriously, is arts, engineering and craft. And all these come together. Okay. Crafters are working hard to create their classic arts and crafts objects. Stephen has moulded his fireplace tiles and is ready to glaze them. Ilsa has finally managed to carve one of the three printing blocks she needs for her wallpaper. And Bryony is moving on to the next stage of creating the Ashby Bowl. She's even found a way to help with Project Rod. So I've raised up my bowl so that the edges are more straight. It was much taller than I wanted it to be, so I've cut off the top rim. I was talking to Rod and he saw that I was about to do this and he said if I could cut it and keep it as a ring, then he might be able to use it for part of something he's making in ceramics. Neve coming along was a bit of a surprise and um, I thought I was in for a bit of a bollocking to be honest but uh, um, it was a pleasant surprise and it was a nice opportunity to be given the scope to make something creative myself. So I'm making a candle sconce, a decorative piece which reflects light. It will have a mounting for a candle and it will have a reflector behind it and it will have a thing around the reflector representing fellowship, representing all sorts of different um, uh, emotions. I'm, I'm not sure how the judges are going to take my piece. I think because they're not going to be expecting it, so therefore it's not going to be a major piece. It will be a sideshow. Abby has almost completed the 30 intricate components he needs for his Sussex chair. But to get the chair made in time, he's relying on Neve, and she's still struggling to weave the seat. Oh, this way. Oh my god. I've rushed my own skirt into the chair. It's kind of surprisingly physically demanding, actually. You have to constantly be keeping the tension and you have to sort of brace the chair frame between your legs, which is very unladylike. <laughs> I guess I never really thought what actually goes into making a chair seat before and how long the process is. Like, it takes bloody ages. So it's a huge appreciation of the furniture of these everyday objects that you're so used to seeing and you just don't you just don't realise what goes into them. Abby is yet to finish the chair. Hopefully by tomorrow morning we will have the chair. That leaves a day before Anita and everyone has to see the chair. You know, we'll get it done, but I just, you know, I don't want to do a crap job on Abby's chair. 
Abby's learning techniques that he's never done before, so I fully understand why, why it's not ready yet, you know, and he is literally working all hours of available daylight that he has to him. Like, he's getting up so early in the morning and he's staying there until the sun goes down. He's pouring his heart into this piece of furniture and I want to do that justice. I want to do his work justice. I don't want to let him down, so we'll just keep going. Now I'm definitely lost. That way? <laughs> I'm bad at this. <laughs> there are just 24 hours to go before the crafter's work will be assessed by our experts. Only problem is, none of them are even close to finishing. This could be one long night. Elsa has returned to the studio to print the next two layers of her design. She's asked for the help of wallpaper expert, Alison McDermott. The dress is too hot, it's getting caught in the machine. I feel uncomfortable, it weighs a lot, it's a warm day, this is hard work. I just can't do it. This is more important, I need focus. To hell with Victorian modesty. In the late 1800s, a woman wouldn't have been allowed to take control of the printing process. Well, I think I probably would have been beheaded if I did this in Victorian times. Well, it was always the men that were the block printers because it was such incredibly hard physical work, as you say. Mm -hmm. And particularly those big blocks, and some of the blocks are absolutely enormous. They would, you know, sometimes take two men to handle them. Mm -hmm. And then for every man, there were about three women who would retouch. So yeah, there was definite demarcation between the sexes. I just wonder if Ilse's wallpaper design is actually really going to integrate with William Morris's wallpaper, but also, is it going to be in the spirit of the arts and crafts movement? They all need to focus on that as well. I'm seeing a lot of intensity, but whether that intensity is joy, as William Morris used to describe, the joy and the passion in the craft and the work ethic, I'm not so sure. I think it's intensity and anxiety that's really there at the moment. Abby is running out of time. If he's going to complete the chair, he'll need some help. Now, I wonder who might be available. God. Hello, mate. Oh, mate, glad yeah. you made it. All right, it's all right. Yeah. It's good time, still got lots of light. Right. Yeah. OK. Bye. I'm just trying to lend Abby a hand, really, because he's at a really critical stage. All his components are made and done, and they look great. And now he's having to sort of work it out, and this is the bit where he can get it just perfect, or it can go horribly wrong. <laughs> Yeah, less pressure. Half a turn in, and then half a turn out. Do you want to just get some sandpaper down here? But do we really need that much? No, no, oh, no, no, it doesn't. I'm just wondering about these quarries about the few. Rod makes really, really good suggestions, but at this stage, one person has to be in charge, and if that's me. That's not okay, quite so it's not quite. So. I'm trying to help as much as I can, but it's not my job. It's Abby's job. I'm trying not to let any disasters that I can see happen. And if we get a line from here to there, which all of the pins can go on. Can you go from the other side and tell It's a tricky one because I can either be silent or I can express my opinion. And we, don't, we all do things differently. I think we're good. What we should be doing... Oh, right, don't, uh, don't, don't, don't. Just well, please, please, I ask you, I ask you to double-check everything together. Did you double-check with me when you did that? That so, joint was not square. Bryony is at a crucial stage in the creation of the C.R. Ashby Bowl. To 
tomorrow, our experts will be expecting to see an interpretation of the original. But Bryony still has a long way to go. I've got to the point where I am soldiering on the handles to the bowl, which, to be honest, is the scariest bit I've had to do so far because they've got to be just right. The fact that I've decided that there are two handles, they have to be exactly symmetrical. The silver has to heat up to a really high temperature so that the solder will melt, and there's a really fine balance of where that melting point is before the actual silver melts, which is why it's so scary. You could easily melt the silver if it gets too hot. This is my fifth. It's your fifth. My fifth yeah. roll. At the wallpaper studio too, there's still a lot of work to do. So there's 54 of my print per roll. If we times that by 21, that's well over a thousand prints. And then I need to do it twice because I've got two colours. And it's taken me 15 minutes to do one colour on one roll. So it's probably going to take me about 12 hours minimum. It's a lot of work. I'm just hoping that it brings Keith a lot of joy as a result. <laughs> Abby and Rod's teamwork is finally paying off. But come dusk, there's still plenty to do to get the Sussex chair in shape. My bowl is nearly finished, but not quite. I've got a little bit more to do than I had hoped. Just got to make one more of those and then fit them and then solder them and then do my final polish. So yes, the only snag is that when you're working this late, um, the sun goes down and so uh, candlelight is my only option. <laughs> It's the final working day in the house for this first week. I need to clear the table in order to set up for the evening meal. And Neve, uh, Anita gave me a book for you. Oh, lovely. There is a note inside, uh, so if you'd like to open it and have a look. Fabulous. Read it out. Wow. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Six extra objects to make. <laughs> Dear Arts and Crafters, music, dance and drama were big parts of the Arts and Crafters' lives. It's how they entertained themselves. For the Arts and Crafts movement, there was a love for the romantic and folk traditions. So, you will be joined by a troupe of folk dancers to give you a lesson. Morris dancers. <laughs> and get you up on your feet. <laughs> have fun, Anita. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have a book on the oh. English country dance. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Just because we didn't have enough things to do, we're going we to learn some dancing. <laughs> but before all that, there's still much to do. Abby has made the framework of his chair and will soon be ready to add the seat. But Neve is struggling to master rush weaving. And then, I think... With time running out, she's asked expert Sally Broadway to help her. And what we're doing is we're just going to work on the front bit. The rest of the crafters are in the parlour, hanging Ilsa's 21 freshly hand-printed rolls of wallpaper. So if I take it from the centre this way and you yeah. go the opposite... Oh. Thank you. So, we've got a match. Hey. With the wallpaper up, Stephen can add the finishing touches to his ceramic tile surround. Thanks to Sally, Neve looks like she's finally got to grips with the rush weaving. <laughs> it's come on really quickly. Couldn't have done it without Sally. Absolutely 
would not have been able to do this all by myself. The technique has been really lovely to learn. Like it's a very tactile thing and the rushes kind of have a very particular smell about them and things. And you know, it's nice to work with your hands in a way that you haven't done before. Um, so it has been brilliant to learn, but it's bloody hard work. Abby has taken a week to turn a tree into a chair. Abby, I have a present Whoa! for you. It's left him exhausted, but happy. In one week, a turn of the last century factory with unskilled men. It works! It's a chair! <laughs> would have produced almost 192 steam oh bent chairs. Yeah. Yeah. But they wouldn't have enjoyed it. And we yeah. have. <laughs> The Arts and Crafts Parlour is complete. The crafter's work is ready to be assessed by Patch and Keith. I hope so. <laughs> they will choose the object that has best captured the spirit of the Arts and Crafts movement. The crafters have chosen some original pieces of furniture from the period to complement the objects they've made. Stephen's tiles now surround the fireplace and Rod's candle sconce is on display. There's so much to look at, isn't there? Where look do we that. start? Oh, that's wow. beautiful. Is that... I keep thinking it's the real one. Is that the Ashby? That's beautiful. That's incredible. Bryony's recreation of the CR Ashby Bowl has taken many hours of careful, exacting work with traditional tools. But is it as beautifully crafted as the original? Beautiful. My God. I mean, that's exactly the kind of clasp that you would get from the silversmiths from the right. Guild of Handicraft. That's doing it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And the hammering's there. You can just see it. It's a real subtle hammering. When just... I saw that last in the workshop, it did not look like right. that. Right. Okay. And <laughs> that certainly didn't look like that. Abby's Sussex chair has been an impressive collaboration. But has he taken a risk by adding his own ideas to the design? This bit here? Yeah, I feel that that, what for me, think? that's really where it's, it's kind of fallen down a little bit there, because actually that's a structural part of the chair. Right. It's not just to hold the arms kind of from moving this way, it's to ground the arms into the frame. And really, that bar should be placed up here. Oh, I, I know it's an interpretation, but... Look, I'm just amazed he's actually I got think it's a chair. fantastic that he's I mean... to do the chair. <laughs> How much of an ask was it to get someone to make a chair in a it's week? It's huge. I mean, yeah. if, you're, you know, if, you're, if you're a cabinet maker, you, you're used to making cabinets. Chair makers is a separate thing. I mean, you know, it's fantastic that he's been able to do that. I think it's amazing. And this is the wallpaper. Yes. I'm really impressed with the wallpaper. I'm, I'm, I love I'm the wallpaper. Impressed. All week, Ilsa's been worried her wallpaper might not be in the true arts and crafts style. It's balanced, doesn't it? Mm. It's got that real sense of I mean, proportion. Yeah. It feels right. It, you looks, know? it looks expensive. It looks expensive. You know, it looks... it looks... It's also slightly playful. It's, it's light, it's airy, it's not, it's, not, it's not kind of heavy and, you know, it no. feels right. Ilsa and I were both concerned. She, she even was concerned that the, the middle accent was going to pop out too much and sort of overwhelm the whole surface design. But it really is amazingly subtle. Honestly, I think the amount of intense work that has gone into producing these objects is quite amazing. Do you have a favourite? I've got a favourite. Yeah. Do you have a favourite? Yes. Yeah. OK. Well, we all know what we like. Should we tell them? Come on in, everyone. Just anywhere here is good. File in, file in. Well, we said we wanted a bit of heaven and we walked in and it yeah. was... We didn't know what to take him first, really. He worked really hard and it, it shows. <laughs> I mean, it's a fantastic room. I think the essence of the arts and crafts movement is living within this room. I and mean, you've done a fantastic job, really. Um, I think we should go through each of the objects. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the chair next. Abdullah. <sighs> How tired are you, by the way? <laughs> Yeah, I've had four hours sleep in the last 48 hours. What well done, Abdullah. I mean, that's a stunning, stunning achievement. To bring all of that together is an amazing thing. I mean, the arts and crafts movement is all about 
this kind of object. It's a combination of different things. I think the modernity of this, the little dot, is fantastic. I think you've caught the spirit of the movement. It sounds like you've poured absolutely every last drop of, you, of yourself and everyone else into that chair. It's beautiful. It's a stunning thing. I think there's elements that if I was going to pick it up and be critical, which I don't want to be, but of course, yeah. you know, I mean, I wouldn't have gone for that low, the low stretcher down here. I think that it's just beckoning it to break. I think, but, you know, hey, what's that? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, Bryony, let's talk about the silver porringer. I mean, I, I think you've done an amazing job. It's a stunning piece. I love the boldness of you doing the twin handle. I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, you know, you've got to then find symmetry within that. Which that is, is another, very scary. which I is know. a very scary part, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. I, I love that clasp because it brings a modernity to it. I think it's beautiful. It brings again, it harmonizes everything. And the hammering is very subtle and lovely. Thank really. you. Thank you very much. much. Absolutely. Well done. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think we should move on to what's all around us the wallpaper. Patch? I it love it. I mean, I, you know, as soon as I walked in, I, again, I didn't really notice it to begin with. And then I, it had to be pointed out to me, which is ridiculous because I knew that you were making wallpaper. Um, <laughs> but. I think it's a fantastic thing. I think you've brought, again, the spirit of you know, what was a, a William Morris-inspired wallpaper, but you've brought your own take to it. It's a fantastic achievement. Well, I, knew, I know that it was a real task. Yes, 22 hours of printing. It was about 2,300 individual prints. Well, you know, that for me, the sheer scale and the sheer focus needed to, to, to complete the task it, it, for, for me is inspirational in itself. Now, I know we spoke about the colour and whether that middle central accent would pop out too much. It doesn't. It looks fantastic. The whole thing looks so subtly sublime. <laughs> it's really wonderful to see. Thanks. Well done, all of you. So we've had a really difficult job because we have to pick one of these objects to be named the object of the week, but we have decided on one. And the object for the parlour is the wallpaper. Well, that ends well. The Morris crafters can relax with some Morris dancing. Well, what else? Oh, dear mother, what a fool I've been. Six young fellas come courting me. Five were blind and the other couldn't see. Oh, dear mother, what a fool I've been. Well, up. It's been quite a big learning curve to work with people who, who work in quite different ways from me. Knowing when to talk to people, when not to talk to people, when to talk about something, when not, and that's a really valuable thing to learn. And again. I'm very proud of myself because I managed to do this task. There was a high chance I couldn't have even finished it. The chair is sitting beautifully next to the other objects that all the other artists have managed beautifully done, so lovely. They're all going, going very well together. I'm sorry, I'm, <laughs> I'm quite tired. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> next time, <laughs> the crafters go back to nature. <laughs> oh. ah. Sorry. And they attempt to bring some calm to the master bedroom. Look at how beautiful that light is on the floor right there. But will creative differences derail their arts and crafts dream? I'm just giving my opinion, is that okay? Because I feel I like I can't give my opinion. 